Greetings, mortal craftsmen. Join me today as we summon forth an eerie scenario where memories lie entombed. Entombed by stones that have witnessed centuries unfold. First of all, select and arrange the bits you wish. Organize the desired layout of the bases by using the miniatures themselves. Glue the bits using cyanocrylate. Don't worry if they stick out of the bases. After they dry, we can cut any extras off from the bits. Use some clippers and exato knife for this. Now, let's add earth texture to the ground area. Make sure to reach every spot around the edges of the bits, ensuring they blend realistically with the ground. We also recommend cleaning the border excess with a swoop motion. Do this for all the bases and let the texture dry completely. Cluster a few rocks in some spaces you'd like, and also near the structures of the crypt, where debris and earth would likely deposit. You can use PVA glue for this. Next, water down some of the PVA glue. Apply it over the old earth area, avoiding the bits. With the glue on top, sprinkle the area with some sand. Apply more in some spots for denser and scanter areas of rubble. Cover with a bit more glue to help fix any looser sands. This will also seal all the dusts and textures. After completely dry, prime your bases with a black color. It's important to let your primer dry entirely before moving on to the following painting steps. Mix two blue paints and add a bit of black to darken them. With the resulting mix of dark blues, base coat all the ground area. Having some tone variations of the overall desired color is always a good technique to employ when painting scenario. Use a wet palette to help you mix, blend and thin down the paints. Remember to reach every earth spot between the temple bits. Also, don't worry about spilling a bit of paint over them, if need be, since the next step is to fully paint the bits using some dark rays. Mix the dark tones in the same way. Carefully base coat all the surfaces of the bits. Dry up a medium dark turquoise on a brush by using a cardboard or paper towel. With it, dry brush all of the earth area. Do the same for the bits using a dark grey. This will start to highlight their edges. Give the bases a little bit to dry while you fetch a dark blue wash. Spread the wash paint over the whole surface making sure you coat every crevice and border of the bases. Leave them for a while, to make sure they dry completely. Let us now return to the path of the dry brush. This time, use the undarkened turquoise blue for the ground. Start adding bits of white to reach lighter blue tones. With each brighter blue, dry brush slightly less of the ground, gradually focusing more on the higher parts and the rocks. Note how the contrast improves, creating a sharper ground effect like this. The following steps will focus on a way to easily achieve a dark marble feel for the chiseled stones. It starts by watering down a dark red color 
and painting random stains on the beach's surface. A thin layer over the grey is sufficient. The idea is to give shades to the slabs according to the red marble veining we are aiming for. The red is also useful to curse the bits by resembling the blood spilled by creatures in this forsaken crypt. At this point, they should look something like this. But don't worry, with the sponge we will improve the effect. Take some chunks off from a sponge to give it a random shape without straight line edges. Then, soak the sponge in a dark grey paint. However, make sure to dry and remove some of it by using a paper towel. With the leftover paint, gently press the sponge over the slabs, statues and columns. Don't fill the whole surface of the bits. Instead, apply the paint creating various shade spots like we show here. The sponge allows the paint to be placed in a random pattern that merges the colors. Repeat the process using a slightly brighter grey. Notice how the fading of the marble stains begins to take shape. Do it a third time with an even lighter grey. At this point, try to press the sponge in a way that also reaches the defined edges of the bits, as a sort of highlight. They are now ready for the red marble veining. Grab a fine tipped brush. Then, choose a different vein orientation for each stone and draw slightly irregular lines. Immediately after painting a line, pat it with a humid brush to make it more slim, feathering the red paint into an aura effect. For a more realistic result, it's important to observe your bits layout. Note that some architectural pieces are independent from one another. These should feature veins in different orientations. Others are broken halves of a larger element. Try to join the lines in this case. Next, let's add some lighter spots to the effect. Place tiny dots of bright red in parts where the lines are thicker and in the junctions between them. This improves the marble veining effect, while also giving a feel of light coming from within the stones. The marble is almost complete. The last step is to gently dry brush the bits with a light grey. The paint must be well dry on the brush, and the aim should be to apply careful strokes. You will end up highlighting the edges, making the details pop some more. Don't overdo this step, however, we are just aiming for the edges. To improve the ancient and dusty look of a crypt, Add some white dry pigment to some spots in the ground. Doing this will enhance the overall tone of the scene and also blend the earth colors. Paint the border with a black for a greater scene effect. Don't rush this part. Make sure you end up with a clear borderline. They are ready to receive some ominous vegetation. We start by adding a few alien blood moon grass tufts. For a more solid fix, you can glue them using a bit of PVA glue.
a pair of tweezers can help you pick up and place the tufts. Their vivid color will richly complement the red in the marble, while also making the whole scene more vibrant. When gluing the tufts, try not to place them randomly spread out. Instead, define some specific areas to cluster them. Take your time to look at each base and think of the layout you want. It can help to use your miniatures in this step. It's also a good idea to glue some tufts directly touching the base's edge to ensure a natural and realistic interface. The final step is to place a few alien turquoise grass tufts. Their teal tone will perfectly blend with the ground and help to compose a haunted, ghostly feeling. Once again, try to create clusters. As the final tuft is placed, the crypt now lies finished, silently resonating faint lost whispers. Thank you for watching, until our next tutorial.